Hello and welcome to Fact Hunters. Today we're plunging into the depths of the internet to tell you all you need to know about the deep and the dark web. So there is a lot of confusion these days about the dark web and the deep web. Following the shutdown of the Silk Road network in 2013 by the FBI, there was a lot of misrepresentation in the media of what parts of the internet are what. So let's clarify. The internet itself can, for the purposes of this explanation, be divided into three main parts. Firstly, there's the surface web. Now this is the portion of the web that you're using to watch this video. Google, Yahoo, Bing, and other major search engines index and access this part of the web. To put it in perspective, current estimates are that Google only accesses about 16% of the total web. Considering the amount of data that is on Google, this clearly shows this is just the tip of an enormous iceberg. Now, this part of the web isn't harmless. You can still pick up viruses and malware from here. That's what we have antivirus software for. Moving on to the second part, we come to the deep web. So, remember our iceberg analogy? Well, we've now gone below the surface of the water, but it's not getting dark yet. This is the part of the web that is not accessed or indexed by search engines. So, Imagine, for example, if you were trying to find something specific on Amazon.com, but after applying all the filters, you still hadn't found the result. There's a search box there, which would bring you straight to where you want to go, but search engines don't work like this, they just use links to get through. You'd quickly find that it was impossible to get to your result via normal methods. Examples of pages on the deep web are your internet banking page. This can't be accessed via a search engine. To get onto the page, you must first access the surface website and then proceed through the site to access your data. No one else can do this without your credentials. So, the deep web doesn't necessarily contain any illicit or harmful information. In fact, most times you navigate away from Google or move around in a website, you are accessing the deep web. Okay, you still with us? Good, because it's about to get a bit darker. The dark web is that portion of the deep web that has been intentionally hidden from the rest of the internet. It cannot be reached via normal search engines or browsers. So, next time your mum says she was searching Google and accidentally stumbled across the dark web, you can tell her she was wrong. And maybe next time don't tell her to search meatspin.com? Anyway, the most well-known part of the dark web is that accessed via the Tor browser. Tor, or the Onion Router, is free software that guarantees anonymity to the user by relaying internet traffic through a worldwide volunteer network of users. The data that is sent is encrypted in layers and at each relay another layer is decrypted and the data is then randomly sent on to another relay where another layer is removed, hence the use of the name Onion. If that doesn't make sense, then imagine a group of people standing in a grid pattern. One of these people is holding an onion. None of them can see each other, but if they reach out, they can touch one another. The person holding the onion looks at it and reads an instruction, pass this to the person on your left. They pass it to that person, who peels off the first layer of the onion and reads the instruction which is written on the second layer. Pass this to the person in front of you. None of the people can see each other, so they can't tell who gave them the onion, so eventually it makes its way to the last person, now that last person is the dark website that the first person was trying to access. Even if they wanted to, the person who finished with the onion couldn't tell who started with it. I hope that makes sense. The content on the dark web is generally thought of in terms of illegal sales of weapons and drugs, which is what it's become famous for. However, it is also used for those who just want to preserve some anonymity within the communities that they've built online. So, that's the video. I hope that made sense to you. It's not as complicated as it sounds. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content and let us know in the comment section below what you want to see covered next. Thanks for watching. 